Moon Meadow artists, Mrs. T here. Welcome back to the art room. Today we're going to be talking about the artist Jasper Johns. For the project that we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at a very simple concept. A few things about Jasper John. Hopefully you watched the video and you learned a little bit about him and his work. Um, but a few things I just wanted to point out. Number one, he uh, was not afraid of representational art, meaning he wasn't afraid to create things that um, you know what they are. They're easily identified. One of his most famous paintings was that of the American flag, something that we all know, something we can all relate to, um, and maybe we all even have stories to them. Many of his other works used letters and numbers. Again, things we all know. What's really cool about Jasper Johns as an artist is that he um, kind of fit into all, di all of the movements. He did pop art, he did minimalism, um, conceptual art, and even performance art. He wasn't just a painter, he was also a sculptor, and so he worked with so many different materials. Today, he's still alive, and um, his work is identified more as complex art. He had a saying um, that he wanted the viewers to look and to think. And by looking at his work, you can then complete the work yourself, which I think is kind of cool because, um, you know, when you look at a, an artist's work, we all interpret it in our own way. That's why sometimes when we talk about the definition of art, you, you know, I simply say it's, you know, in the eye of the beholder or the eye of the viewer. And in, in a lot of cases, that can be true. Some things are very concrete. An American flag is an American flag. Um, a target is a target. This drawing here that we're going to be doing is three simple numbers, seven, one, and eight. Now, to me, those numbers might have one meaning, but to you, it has another meaning. So that's what uh, Jasper Johns is asking you to do, is he's asking you to look and think about the art. And when you look at it, complete the piece for yourself. Give it the meaning that you need it to have and don't worry about your meaning matching the viewer's meaning. So it's kind of cool, something to think about. To complete today's work, both of these projects, we're gonna use the same material. You need a piece of paper, you need marker and or crayon. You can even use oil pastels. Um, probably not watercolor. We probably, for this one, we're gonna stay away from paint. Then optional, if you have available to you, um, you would want some stencils. I have some very large stencils here, which I use to complete this one. However, stencils are not required and you can complete it this way. I'm gonna do a quick demo and I'm gonna move the materials here so you can see a little bit better, but I'm gonna do a quick demo of this number one here and this one here. With Jasper Johns, he did a series of like numbers and letters and letters versus numbers. And in most cases, it was just, just as simple as layering those letters or those numbers and then adding color to them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So if you have stencils available to you, it could be letters, it could be numbers, it could be letters and numbers. Um, whatever works for you. But you will simply think about the order that you want the letters. So let's say you decide to do your name. Think, do you want it to read forward or backward? Now, in reality, it won't necessarily matter. It's just kind of for your mental thought process. This one here, I did um, my last name. Trinasky. 
you can't really tell where I started, which direction does it go? Does it start at the T and end at the Y or does it start at the Y and end at the T? I will tell you I did it so that it ends in the Y and it starts with the T. So the last thing I added was that T right there in the front. So you decide for yourself. Um, just for the sake of speed, the number seven is on top of my stencils. So if I'm using stencils, you're gonna lay them down, decide how you want them, and you are simply going to trace. Always start with pencil. Even though you're using a stencil and it's really easy not to make mistakes, I do recommend still, um, for the sake of consistency, starting by tracing your letters and numbers. So you are simply gonna take that. All right, I did that one. Um, I gotta find one that's opened. And then I have my number one. So I'm just going to decide where I want this place. Do I want it offset? Do I want it centered? I'm gonna kind of offset this one just for fun. And I'm going to go ahead and trace it again. When you're using stencils, know that stencils do move with the amount of pressure. Um, I can show you here. I made a mistake because my stencil moved. So that's okay. Again, another reason why, even though it's a simple concept, if you use a pencil, it's easy to go back and make mistakes. Now, had I done that with marker, I would have had to come up with a way to um, make that work in my piece. Remember, beautiful oops. Just because we made an oops doesn't mean we cannot make it beautiful. So, oh, I keep my pencil apparently needs to be sharpened because I keep missing spots. So then, all right, the eight's right here. I'm gonna throw this right up on top. Again, decide where you want it in your picture and then trace it. So, to avoid your stencil from moving as you're using it as tracing, use your non-dominant hand to kind of hold the stencil down right where you're working. It will help, I, I promise. Sometimes I forget to do that, so try not to forget to do it. It just, it will really be helpful for you. Oops, of course, then you just make mistakes on your own. <laughs> All righty. So now I have my letters and or my numbers all stenciled, layered on top of each other. At this point, you're gonna go back and you're gonna add color. You can decide how you wanna do that on your own. Um, perhaps you wanna do it section by section. Maybe you want the number seven to be all one color. Maybe you want the one to be all one color. So you have to decide how you're gonna do your layering, you know, or you can simply Take one section at a time and color in those sections um, based on what you want it to look like. If you, I will tell you, if you do it kind of like shape by shape, how I'm starting to do here, it will make it a much more abstract and more dynamic picture. As you can see here, you can really identify the seven, the one, and the eight primarily because I kind of stuck with the same colors um, throughout. Another option to consider is maybe taking, making the basic part where there's no overlapping, make those primary colors and consider where maybe the seven overlaps the eight. If the seven is blue and the eight is purple, or I'm sorry, the eight is red, where the seven and eight overlap, what color would they make? violet, right? It makes our secondary colors. So maybe you do something like that. This is your project. You have cr creative freedom. So let's put that one off to the side and I'm going to show you how to do this one. If you do not have stencils, um, one of the things that I did was I took a ruler and I kind of gave myself um, a little bit of a frame. So I took my ruler and at the top I just drew very lightly, because I want to be able to erase it later, I drew a light line, and I drew a light line from the bottom. Just the width of my ruler, just to make it easy, and I just drew the line very lightly. Now, what that does is that gives me kind of my start point and my end point for my letters or my numbers. 
just to keep them consistent. This one I did straight away with marker. I didn't feel like I needed to use pencil. Um, it's never a bad thing to use a pencil. So choose what you're going to write. Um, I'm gonna do, let's see. I'm gonna do the word color, all right? So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna do it in rainbow colors. So I'm gonna start with the letter C. So I'm just simply going to write my big C. There we go, C. Now, the next letter is O, which is very similar to the C. So I have some options here. I can go bigger than my C. I could go smaller than my C. I can go really, really like kind of like right on top of my C. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger, I think, especially because the word color has two O's. So I want to consider that. So now my yellow L, I'm just going to kind of put that right on top of these other ones. Ooh, now I have my other O. That one I'm going to put inside my C. And then I'm going to use my blue. Actually, I'm going to do colors. And then that one I'm going to put right outside of my L. That way I can use my violet. Oh, that's right. This one I don't have a... I must have lost my violet marker. And then here comes my S for colors. So there we go. We have the word colors. And then, um, like I said, I was gonna go back and I was gonna erase that pencil mark. And then here, of course, you have the option if you wanna take a crayon or multiple crayons and color your background, you can do that. Um, you know, maybe put a rainbow in the background, whatever you want, so you can always add that. So there we go. Jasper John's Inspired Numbers and Letters. Hope you're staying creative. See you soon.